You're going to start on Unit 4, Organic Chemistry. Organic Chemistry is the chemistry of biological molecules. Some of them have been underground for a long time, but they are still of some biological source. Today we're going to start our unit on Organic Chemistry, that is the chemistry of carbon-containing compounds. They also contain things like hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, phosphorus, and the halogens. Although much more rarely the halogens are naturally occurring, but we're going to use them a lot in this unit. We'll start with a comparison of organic and inorganic compounds. For the organic compounds, we know that they have covalent bonds, whereas most inorganic compounds have ionic bonds. Since organic compounds have covalent bonds, they are molecular compounds. Most of them are nonpolar and are soluble in nonpolar solvents. On the other hand, inorganic compounds are ionic and tend to be soluble in polar solvents, like water, if they're soluble at all. Since organic compounds are molecular, they are also non-electrolytes, whereas the ionic inorganic compounds that do dissolve are likely to be strong electrolytes. Organic compounds tend to have very low melting and boiling points. What we mean by low melting and boiling points is below 500 degrees Celsius, whereas, whereas inorganic compounds have melting points that are much higher, in the three to 5,000 degrees Celsius range. It is well known that organic compounds burn very easily, whereas inorganic compounds do not burn readily at all. In fact, this is used as a test for organic compounds. When we have a fire, you can see that the leaves, the wood, the paper will all burn because they are organic compounds. On the other hand, things like the cement, the bricks, and the metal do not burn, and they are inorganic compounds. And finally, we know that there are far, far more organic compounds, more like 3 million organic compounds, than there are inorganic compounds, which only range in the hundreds of thousands. Now we're going to look at how we can draw those organic compounds. Since these are covalent bonds in the organic compounds, we're going to use Lewis dot structures to help us draw them. So we're going to start with carbon. And with carbon, we know that there are four dots because it's a group 4A. Now let's look at how many single dots there are. If they're single, they're going to want to find a partner to bond with. And in the case of carbon, we have four single electrons, which means that there will be four bonds. There also happens to be four bonding patterns for carbon when we have four bonds available. The first pattern has one bond going in each direction. Next, we commonly see carbon with two bonds going one direction and the other two bonds going in two other wet directions. The next common pattern has three bonds going one direction and the last bond going the opposite direction. And finally, we can see something like carbon dioxide where we see two double bonds going one way and the other double bond going the other direction. Next, let's look at hydrogen. Hydrogen has only one electron, so there is only one dot on the Lewis dot symbol, and that means that there is only one bond formed for hydrogen. That bond can get, go in any of the four directions, but there is only one bond. Looking at oxygen, we see that there are six valence electrons, so that means there are six dots around oxygen leaving us with only two that are alone, so we only have two bonds. Those two bonds can either go in two different directions or both go in the same direction for a double bond. Now, what do you get for sulfur? Why don't you try it? Well, since sulfur is in the same family as oxygen, we see that there are six dots, which leaves two of them single, giving us two bonds with two options, either both bonds going in opposite directions or both going the same way for a double bond. Looking at nitrogen, we see that there are five valence electrons, and that leaves us with three electrons that are not bonded, so we can make three bonds for nitrogen. Those bonds can either go in three different directions, two bonds going one way and one going the other, or all three of them going in the same direction. Finally, let's look at the halogens. They are all in group 7A. We'll use chlorine as an example. We see that there are seven valence electrons around chlorine. That leaves only one that can bond. So we see one bond for all of the halogens. 
and that bond can go in any of the four directions. Rather than using Lewis dot structures every time we draw a compound, we found that there's a simple mnemonic to help us remember how many bonds should be present. This mnemonic is called the Honk Rule. The Honk Rule has H for hydrogen and the halogens, O for oxygen, N for nitrogen, and C for carbon. It says that the H has one bond, the O has two bonds, the N has three bonds, and carbon normally has four bonds. And this pattern will follow for any element in the same group.